Hello, my name's Nathan Cohen. I'm an astrophysicist and inventor, and many know me as the creator of fractal antennas and the invisibility cloak. Well, fractal antennas have been scientifically validated in over 2,000 publications across the globe, and they're a permanent part of our wireless world. Students at universities, high schools, and even grade schools build fractal antennas not only to learn, but to have fun. And many students have even won science fairs with their cool fractal antenna projects. Every once in a while, you'll still see a study that says fractal antennas don't work. In this video, you're going to see a debunking of one such analysis on the fractalized Sierpinski bow tie antenna. That analysis is found on antennatheory.com. There have been many scientific papers showing the advantages of the Sierpinski bow tie over a conventional bow tie. So it seems odd to find a study that claimed that fractal antennas don't work. Here I'm going to show that this study on antennatheory.com is fatally flawed, and it's flawed for three major reasons that make it scientifically invalid. The first is that it engages in selection bias, where parts of the results are ignored in order to bias the outcome. And second, it engages in confirmation bias, where the study comes to a conclusion based on a single data point and reverts to an assumption, in this case, of simplicity over complexity. And lastly, the study engages in invalid measurement protocol and obtains its results through faulty means. Following the description of the antennatheory.com website, we created here the Sierpinski bow tie antennas made in that study. As a conventional and necessary procedure, we connected the feeds coax at a right angle to each aperture. We then choked the coax. This assures that we measure the antenna alone and not the coax cable and connectors along with the antenna. We then measured the antenna's performance using a vector network analyzer calibrated for S11 and S12. This allowed us to measure both SWR and gain simultaneously in an anechoic range. Well, here are the results for SWR. And here are the results for gain. The results are very interesting because despite the assertions of the antennatheory.com website, the third iteration, Sierpinski bow tie, performs better than the conventional bow tie. Why? Well, first, the lowest resonance has been moved down from 575 to 500 megahertz. This means that the Sierpinski bow tie can be made 14% smaller than the conventional bow tie. Additionally, the SWR has improved dramatically at this lowest resonance, and it's now a good match for a conventional 50 ohm system. We also notice that the other higher resonances tend to have better SWR than the bow tie and the gains. Well, look at the gains. The gains of the third iteration Sierpinski bow tie are actually slightly better than the gain of the conventional bow tie at the lowest resonance. And as you go up in frequency, the fractal advantage and gain improves even more. So what gives? The Sierpinski bow tie seems to be a better performer than a conventional bow tie. At its fundamental resonance, it has better performance slightly better gain and much better SWR than a conventional bow tie. Not only that, but it can be made much smaller than a conventional bow tie when scaled for frequency due to fractal shrinkage. Yet antennatheory.com claims that the Sierpinski bow tie performs much worse both from an SWR and gain slash efficiency perspective. Well, errors. The first error of this study on antennatheory.com is that the lower frequency bound cuts off the fundamental resonance. That's unbelievable. It's cutting off essential data. It's analogous to comparing the heights of two people, but one is measured standing on their knees. This is a selection bias used to exclude data that explicitly shows advantage to the fractalized antenna. 
and that's bad science. In addition, the data taken with this selection bias is not explored for alternative explanations. Although the antennatheory.com website says that we should emphasize simplicity, we're studying complexity here with fractal antennas. So there's a confirmation bias of simplicity over complexity in the very nature of this study. In addition to the unnamed experimenter leaving out the fundamental resonance, his measurements over the full bandwidth do not match our data set. Why is this? This grave error occurs in how the feed line is attached. If you look closely, you can see the feed line runs along the edge of the ground side of the bow ties. In addition, it's not soldered continuously, but at repetitive points. Uh-oh, don't ever attach a feed line this way. The attempt by the experimenter is to emulate something called an infinite ballon. However, it's done improperly, and this way of attaching the feed line only produces current distribution asymmetry and forces the coax itself to radiate in addition to the antenna. So you're no longer measuring just the antenna, but also it's radiating coax. You can't make any conclusions about the performance of the antenna alone by measuring this way. That's why we attach our coax at a right angle and choke it. There's no coax radiating. When we produce this faulty method of attaching the coax, we get very similar results to the original experiment. You'll see in this figure a comparison of the SWR or the third iteration Sierpinski bow tie measured correctly and then measured in the manner of the original antennatheory.com experiment. The SWR profiles are very different because now the coax has radiated on the antennatheory.com analysis. Thus we see that even ignoring the selection bias and confirmation bias, the results of this experiment are invalidated by improper methods of measurement gathering. Well, do fractal antennas work and work better? Yes, and we debunked a flawed experiment on antennatheory.com that shows otherwise. We think you should go ahead and try this experiment itself and build your own fractal antennas. And friends, continue to have fun with fractal antennas, and thank you.